to a brand new episode of Capital Cosplay TV, and today I am finally back because I finally saw it yesterday. Now, I didn't do my review yesterday because I wanted to uh, give it a chance to sink in, kind of get a, a good idea of what this would do to you uh, after you go to sleep with the, that clown still on your head. So it stars Bill Skarsgård as Pennywise the Clown, Jaden Lieberher as Bill Denbro, and Finn Wolfhart as Richie Tozer, you probably know him from Stranger Things, and Plain and Simple is about a group of kids teaming up to kill an evil clown. Now, I'm going to put spoiler tags right here, spoilers, it's in the title, I'm saying it right now, this is a spoiler heavy review, if you don't want spoilers, uh, just watch someone else's review, I'm going to talk spoilers. Uh, so let's see. Let's start out with the Georgie scene in the beginning because this really grabs you. This scene is terrifying. It's disturbing. It's traumatizing, I guess is the word I'm looking for. And you know the filmmakers did a good job because you only see Georgie for, I'm going to say, six minutes or so. And yet when he dies, you care about him. Now, this may be on account of the fact that he is a kid and you have that innocence torn away from him. Uh, his innocence and his arm torn away. And <laughs> jokes. Oh, I should not be making that joke. Um, and it's really terrifying because he kind of charms Pennywise, who you meet in this scene, kind of charms him into it. And then when he finally reaches down there, Pennywise grows this snout, almost like his... In the original, you know, this Pennywise right here, he kind of just looks down, looks back up, he has some fake teeth. And this one, he grows like a snout almost, with rows and rows of teeth, and bites his arm off. And you and you see the arm get pulled into the sewer, and Paul Georgie is like crawling across the street with his arm, and he's this little five-year-old kid, just got his arm taken off. And it's, it's quite a way to start off a movie, I'll say that. I mean, it is horrifying. And this movie does not stray away from child violence at all. Um, but like I said, you meet Pennywise here. And Pennywise is great. He's terrifying. He is unsettling as can be. I mean, this guy is creepy. Um, the voice grew on me. At first, I didn't really like the voice. And then I loved it. Because at first, it's... It, it's, it was a change from the Tim Curry Pennywise, who sounded more like, you know, Hiya, Georgie, aren't you gonna say hello? Whereas the new one is a, a bit of a quicker delivery, and almost a more friendly one. Um, it's, you know, Hiya, Georgie, don't you want your phone? It's, that's not even close to what it sounds like, but you get the idea, it's kind of more child molestery, so I guess not friendly. It's much more unsettling. Um, there's this one scene in the movie where he's in the sewer and he's in this, like, dancing thing. This Pennywise a dancing clown, almost boxcar that would go on, like, a traveling circus. And you see him doing this kind of dance, you know, where the hands are doing this and the legs are going side to side. And his whole movie is body is swaying except for his head. He's staying perfectly still while the rest of him is going side to side, and it's so unnatural and creepy, and it, the way it zooms in on his face and the rest of his head is, it's like his head is the focus of everything else is shaking. It's really unsettling and terrifying. Or, uh, there's a fridge scene where he crawls out of the fridge and he's upside down, and you see his limbs, like, turn around, his body turns around, and his head does a 360. He, like, unfolds which is also extremely terrifying and creepy. I mean, it's unnatural. It's I'm, it's really something that is done perfectly, I think, for this for this movie. So let's move on to the Losers Club. The Losers Club, I loved. I think they were all great actors. I think they had great chem chemistry. I thought they were very realistic as kids, in that they cuss a lot, and you would, I, I mean, when I'm with my friends, I'm cursing up a storm, we all are, and it's really realistic, and I love that, it, it really does feel like they are best friends, and they all are, and I'm, in real life, they're all best friends, like, they love each other in real life, no homo, but like, they're best friends in real life, and it really does show in this movie. They're all great actors, they're all really likable, and they're all some people that you would just want to go hang out with. Uh, I'm going to focus on a few of them. Firstly, 
talking about Bill is kind of Bill's kind of like the leader of the group. He's the one that brings everyone into these sewers. He's the one that brings everyone into it. And it's because he just wants to find his brother, who he really feels his death was never solved. And it really wasn't. And, you know, it you really do feel for him in this movie because he is a victim. Ultimately, he lost his brother. And all he wants to do is get his brother back, and he pulls all these people in with him. Uh, there's this one scene in the basement, you know, that, you know, you'll float to, that they show in all the trailers. But they don't show one part of it in the trailers, is where you see him screaming, you know, you'll float to, and then his face starts to deteriorate and decay, and his voice starts to get demonic. And then the water level lowers, and you see he's holding Pennywise's hand. Then Pennywise starts mouthing it, and his eyes are, like, going in different directions, uh, which Bill Skarsgård actually did himself, so he moved each of his eyes individually. And then, you know, he jumps, and he kind of trips on a stair and falls. His eyes roll back into his head, and he slowly kind of slithers back into the water. Which is, again, a perfect example of Bill Skarsgård and Pennywise. Let's talk about Richie, because Richie is the scene stealer. I think he is funny. He was always wisecracking. I laughed a lot. It was definitely humor that a middle schooler uh, and high schooler will absolutely connect with. It's humor that a middle schooler and high school would give out. Um, let's talk about the projector scene, because he doesn't really see... You know, he makes a joke, and he says, Oh, I guess uh, only virgins can see Pennywise. That's why I haven't seen him yet. <laughs> you know, and... So we see Pennywise in that projector scene, you know, you see in the trailer. So they kick it over, and then he's cussing, and then it's kind of out of focus, and then you see Pennywise again, and it clicks, and he's gone. And then it clicks again, and Pennywise pops out of the projection, which, you know, shouldn't be possible, because it's not a, pro it's like not even a TV, it's just a projection, but he pops out, and he's like, it's like, it reminded me of Apocalypse in, um, X-Men Apocalypse, I think, yes, yeah, X-Men Apocalypse, that's what it was called, yeah, um, where he grows really big, kind of same with Pennywise, and then they open up the garage, and it's fine. There's also a scene, um, with Bill and him, because after they get back from this really creepy house, you know, Bill's freaking out, Bill wants to go back in, and Richie brings up Georgie and kind of crosses the line. Bill pushes him, Richie pushes back, and, uh, Bill just slugs him in the face. And, you know, everyone holds him back. It seems like there's gonna be a fight, and that really stays with you. Because they are, like, great friends, and this is something that really divides everyone, and it's hard to watch. So then you have Beverly, who's kind of the brave one of everyone, and who kind of does things the most, and she is the one that has the worst home life, you know, her dad is a creep, and is abusive, you know, he gets really touchy in a way that he shouldn't, it's really disgusting, and there's a scene where he is, um, she's trying to go out, and he puts like a padlock on the door, and he starts breaking her hand, then she runs, gets on the floor, he kind of gets on top of her, and he just you know, kicks him in the nuts, she runs into the bathroom, locks the door, he kicks the door open for the bathroom, and she gets, like, the toilet cover, and he opens up the shower curtain, it, you know, she's hiding in the shower, and she just cracks him over the head with that thing, and he, he's very dead, and then as soon as she turns around, you know, Pennywise's hands are around her throat, and she gets kidnapped by Pennywise, let's talk about the scene in the sewer, so this is like right after he does that creepy dance I mentioned earlier, she tries to run across, he jumps over, picks her up by the throat, and opens his mouth and does that snout thing again, but you see three lights, or like, like the dead lights, which is actually kind of his true form, and she floats, and I'm glad there is finally explanation for your float too, because it was never in the 90s one, I haven't personally read the book, and there's finally an explanation for, you know, you'll float too. And it's really cool. But it's also terrifying because their eyes go completely white. Now, let's talk about Henry Bowers because he's like a really nice guy in real life. But he is just a, a 
unlikable, psychotic dude in the movie. There's a part where he is, like, carving his name into the kid's, like, stomach, in the, uh, Ben, the kind of chubbier kid, into his stomach, and my god, and all of his friends are like, dude, chill out, he's like, no, no, I'm gonna carve it into here like, uh, cottage, cottage cheese, there's a part where he gets a knife in the mail, and he, and there's a thing on TV where Pennywise going, kill them all, kill them all, so, you know, Bowers kills his dad, and then he goes into the sewer, um, at the scene where they're going to save Beverly, and tries to kill Mike, who's the black kid, uh, black kid in the group, and, uh, with, I believe it's called a railgun, yeah, and anyway, Mike throws him down the well, which, the only thing I don't like about that is, isn't Bill supposed, uh, sorry, Mike's, no, Henry's supposed to survive because Henry is the one who, you know, confesses to the murders of all of them, so if he got, I mean, it's possible that Pennywise gonna resurrect him and he survived that fall, and if so, I'm happy because he's supposed to sur uh, survive until the adult portion. Uh, let's talk about the end scene. So, they go down, and they see, you know, Georgie, and Bill kills Georgie, or, you know, he knows it's not Georgie, he knows it's Pennywise, and he says, I love you, dude, but you are not Georgie. Pops him in the head with the railgun. Um, then they fight, and then he really does c finally come to terms with the fact that Georgie's gone, and there's nothing that they can really do about it. Then you have that end scene, like I said, where they fight the clown, and they all start hitting him over the head with things, and then he gets Bill, and he basically says, either you let me eat him, um, and you guys go, or I'll kill all of you. And Richie says, you know, I hate you, we fought, you dragged me into the sewer, and now I'm gonna have to kill this blanking clown, hits him over the head with a bat, then the clown turns to Beverly and turns into her dad and says, oh, well, come home, Bev. Beverly doesn't care. She drives a spear through his throat. Um, and then Pennywise just kind of disappears down the pipe and he goes, fear, and then goes down the thing. Then uh, Beverly starts talking about vision she had while she was uh, floating and kind of like how, you know, she saw them as adults. And then they all cut their hands you know, kind of Blood Brothers, make a pact to return, then the credits roll, and it says, this was chapter one, which I love, this, this review is getting really extensive, I know, so thank you for sticking around, and at the very end of the credits, you hear a clown laugh, which is, you know, implies Pennywise is obviously still alive, let's talk about some easter eggs real quick, uh, I love all the film markies, there was, Nightmare on Elm Street 5, Bad Man, this takes from 1989. Uh, you see a bunch of, uh, Gremlins and Beetlejuice posters in, uh, Bill's room. You see the original Pennywise costume, which was awesome. So overall, uh, my end thoughts on the movie, I gotta say, it's terrifying. It is well acted. The clown is creepy. This movie will stay with you for a long time. I really want to see this again. It's a deep story, and at no point in the movie was I bored. In the end, I will say, I will give this movie a 10 out of 10. So with that being said, that will wrap it up for this extensive review. Thank you so much for sticking around for this whole video. It's funny because this took up two and a half pages, and this movie was like 16 minutes long, whereas uh, 8 Mile was four pages, took up eight minutes. But that's it. Thank you for watching this very extensive movie review and my thoughts on it. Be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Uh, tell me your thoughts on the movie in the comments below, and I will see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Wait.